Welcome back. In previous video, we saw binary representation of P plus 3 nodes and some code examples. We first understood pointer binary representation. My implementation of a pointer is 13 bytes. It has a type, it has a position and a chunk, which we will understand what the position and the chunk is in this video. Then we looked at the binary representation of an internal node. The first byte is a flag. Using bitwise flags, we understand if it's a root and the type of the node. Then we have a pointer which points to nodes smaller than key one and a pointer which points to the nodes greater or equal to key one. And the same thing happens for key two and key three. In our example, the node had three keys, which means the degree of the three was four. And the binary representation of a leaf node was pretty much like an internal node. However, there wasn't a pointer here. Since every key paired with a pointer and the pointers point to the data on disk. Which if we go back means that the type of the pointer is data. In this video, we want to see how an index file which may store one or multiple B plus trees is stored on disk. Our first topic is data alignment. And to understand this concept, we can say we have an index file, which is full of binary data. And the question is, how many bytes should we read from this file to access a single node? And this is important because you can assume that we want to read this file and create a tree. And if we don't have a number for this, we don't know how many bytes our cursor should go ahead when we are reading this file and extracting nodes. To determine this number, let's go back and take a look at our binary representation of internal node and leaf node. So if we stick to this assumption that the type of the keys in our tree are integer and the degree of the tree is 4, so it has 3 keys, the sum of these numbers is 65 despite this padding, which we will discuss now. And the sum of these numbers is 52. And these numbers represent the size of each node. However, for a perfect data alignment, these numbers should be equal. So we could say 65 can be the number of the bytes for each node. And always add 13 zero bytes to the end of a leaf node to make these numbers equal. And that 13 zero bytes is exactly what this padding is. However, something is missing in our binary representation of a leaf node. As we have seen in previous videos, when we have a leaf node and it gets full, then a new leaf node is created and the old one points to the new leaf node. Additionally, the new leaf node also knows about the previous leaf node. So we can say in binary representation of our leaf nodes, we need to store two more pointers to point to previous and next node. So if we assume that this is a binary representation of a leaf node, what I've done is that I've added two new pointers at the end of this byte array. The first one points to the previous node. And second one, points to the next node. Now the sum of these numbers is 78, which is already greater than 65. However, one more thing that I do, which is not really necessary, is that I still add a padding to make the length of this array divisible by 8. This is the function I wrote to do that. It's available under B3 size calculator class. 
First, we have one byte for the flag. Then we have degree times, pairs of keys and values. And then we have two pointers to point to next and previous nodes. Afterwards, if this value is already divisible by eight, I return it. Otherwise, I return the value plus eight minus the remainder of the division of this value by eight. Again, we could use any number instead of this eight. And this whole practice is not totally necessary. If we apply the same function to this example, this spanning will be two bytes. And the sum would be 80. Now again, to make these numbers equal, we need to add 50 to 65, which is the size of this padding. Therefore, in our specific example, this n equals to 80. And each time we read 80 bytes from this file, we know that we have read a single node. Next, we want to talk about order of the nodes in an index file. We assume that we have an empty index file. Which also means our tree is empty for now. Again, for our assumption, the degree would be 4. And that means we have maximum of 3 keys in each node. Let's see how the file grows as we want to add numbers 10, 20, 30, and 40. Since the tree is empty, a new node is created. And keys 10, 20, and 30 come here. Each one of them has a pointer to the data on disk, the DB file. And if you remember the algorithm, in order to add 40, we need to create a new node. And the idea was that if we add 40 here, then we would need to split this node and move this part to the new node. So we do that. And we remove 30 from this node. Also, since we now have a new leaf node, we need to create an internal node and copy the first key of newly created leaf node to internal node and add the pointers. If we go back to the beginning of the operations, we first created this leaf node. So we reserved 80 bytes in the beginning of this file. Before we had 40, we had 30 here and this was our root node. But after we added 40, we created a new node and we moved 30 to the new node. So this new node is the second 80 bytes in this file. And in the end, to keep the balance of our tree, we created a new internal node and added 30 to this node, which is the third 80 bytes node that we store in this index file. Again, don't forget that there is a pointer from this first leaf node to the second one and from second one to the first one. Also at this point, this internal node is the root of the tree. The main point here is that if we read this file node by node, creating the tree is not that easy because the nodes that are added to this file are not in order that we can benefit from. Also, the position of the root node keeps changing. As you have seen in the beginning, this first node was root, then later this one was root, and in the future any other node could become root. So the question is, how can we work with the B plus 3 if the position of the root is not determined for us and nodes are not in a particular order in the index file? But before we discuss that, let's make some things clear about pointers. In previous video, we saw that my implementation of a pointer has three elements. The first one is type. If we come back here, the pointers that go from internal nodes to other internal nodes or leaf nodes have type of node. And pointer in leaf nodes that point to the location of data on disk 
are of type data. The next two elements of a pointer are position and chunk. Right now, our example is using a single index file, but in case each file has a maximum size, let's say 100 megabytes, we may have to create multiple files to store a full B plus tree. In such cases, each of the files that is used for a single tree is called chunk, and we have chunks 0, 1, 2, and goes on. We will discuss the beneficial of creating multiple chunks in next videos. But now we can understand the definition of position. If we look at this file as a flat byte array, the position of each of these nodes in this byte array looks like this. The first node starts at position 0, the second one at 80, and the next one at 160. So if you want to know how this pointer which points to the first node looks like, again, the type is node, the position is 0, and if this is the index file of chunk 0, then the chunk is also 0. The next pointer which points to the second leaf node as type node, the position is 80, and the chunk is 0. Same thing happens for these pointers, the pointer from the second node to the first node, as type node, chunk 0 and position 0, and this other one, as type node, position 80 and chunk 0. Now back to our problem from earlier, we said that we lose the position of the root. Any of these nodes could become root at any point. So we need a mechanism to track the root node. There is not just a single way to do this, but the basic idea is that we can have a header and this header holds data about which tables we have what are the index file per each table? Which in other words, it could also mean how many chunks the table has. And also for each index of a table, we can store the pointer to the root node. There are different ways to implement such header. One way is to create a separate header file and keep updating it as we update the index files. Or the alternative, in some cases, is to store the header in the beginning of the index file. At the time of recording this video, my implementation is using this method. And the header file is a JSON file. So reading it and parsing it would be much easier than working with B plus 3 in binary format. So as new nodes are created and the root changes, the pointer of the root node should also change in the header. Our next topic is storing zero. So if we go back here and look at the representation of internal and leaf nodes, you can see that we assumed our keys are integer and they are 4 bytes, both in internal and leaf nodes. But the problem is that if we assume this is a byte array and it's loaded from disk to memory, then to extract keys from these nodes, we have to read a specific chunk of this byte array. And for example, this is the first key. It starts at offset 1, ends at 5. And if the number here is 0, then we have 4 0 bytes. Now that's a problem because if we didn't have a number here, for example, which would mean this node is not full yet, then in a byte array, this area would still be 4 zeros. So whenever we see 4 0 bytes, the question would be is it null or is it 0? 
there are two ways to deal with this problem. One way is that whenever we hit a key and we want to see if it's zero or null, to answer the question, we just check if the pointer next to it is zero or null. And that is because we add pairs of keys and values to our nodes and the values are not nullable. But this solution only works if we are assured that the type of the value is a pointer. Because if this value was an int, we again had to find out a way to know if 4 bytes are null or zero. Since both keys and values are comparable generics, then the second solution would be to have a class which provides us the size of each of keys or values. And if we pass a byte array of the same size to this class, it can tell us if the data exists or not. It should be able to convert the byte array to inner comparable object. And it should also be able to convert the inner comparable object to a byte array. For example, if our inner comparable object is an integer and we want to support 0, instead of working with 4 bytes to store an integer, this class can store 5 bytes. And the first one is a flag to show is the number null or not. Therefore, the size that it provides is 5 bytes. If we pass byte array with size 5 to it, it checks the flag to see if it's null or not. To read the integer from this byte array, it reads the first 4 bytes. And to convert an integer to byte array, it creates 5 bytes byte array. The last byte is 1 and it's followed by 4 bytes of integer. In next video, we will see code example of everything that has been discussed so far. So till then, take care.